So have you ever felt like you don't belong, that you're different, that you're not from this place or that you have some sort of purpose or mission or whatever it is. It's just something that's eating away at you inside in your soul. You know that there is something going on. Well, today we're going to be taking a look at the idea of what a chosen one is and different signs that you can look at to tell if you are one. Now, what are we even talking about here? Well, Within the New Age community, there is this idea of the chosen ones, and chosen ones can mean various different things. So we're going to be taking a look at these concepts like light workers and indigo children and star seeds, etc., and seeing how this relates to souls and their mission and what they're doing here and signs that you can look at. And we're going to be, of course, as always, looking at this through the lens of logic and reason, because as you know, in the New Age community, we talk about this a lot here in a lot of spiritual systems. They often get in the right ballpark of a correct interpretation of reality, but sometimes have misinterpretations that lead to misunderstandings. So we're going to be looking at this understanding. We always want to remember we're trying to understand the metaphysical realm rationally through meta-rationalism, and we're going to be taking a look at this and understanding exactly what a chosen one is, if you're one of them, and how you can tell. So it's going to be really good. Thank you all for joining me. By the way, we're going to get started, but before we do, please like and subscribe. Hit like, hit subscribe. It helps a lot, helps spread this information around. Remember, this isn't just entertainment. This is about helping people raise consciousness and exposing people to this kind of information. So when you hit like and subscribe, it it really helps. So please do. Oh, by the way, we just hit 400,000 subscribers like 10 minutes ago. It was awesome. We did it live on stream. So we're at 400,000 subscribers. That's amazing. Thank you all so much. You're all incredible. Uh, really appreciate all the support. And as always, hey, remember, if you want to support my work, you can on patreon.com slash morgue official. You get access to all our members only videos or you can become a member on YouTube by hitting the join button. I have a book series coming out this year, very soon. Multiple books I will be releasing, so keep an eye out for that, all outlining the Neogenian system in detail. So keep an eye out for that. That's going to be really good. I'm extremely excited about this. Also, I am on Spotify now. You can find my videos on Spotify as a podcast called Dawn of the New Earth. So go follow me on Spotify, Dawn of the New Earth. Help. Like I said, it's about spreading information. Well, this helps spread it across multiple platforms. So I'll see you over there on, on Spotify. As always, remember, there's scammers in the comments, people pretending to be me, saying to join my WhatsApp, join my Telegram, whatever. Uh, I don't have any of those things, so don't fall for it. It's a scam. Also, there are a lot of people and groups out there who don't like what I'm doing and don't like what we're doing and are spreading a lot of misinformation and disinformation about me and our group and what we do. So just, as always, use logic and reason. Don't fall for the bullshit. All right. Here we go, my friend. So 15 signs that you are a chosen one. What is a chosen one? What are we talking about exactly? Now, as always, what we're going to be taking a look at here and what inspired me to talk about this was an article over on medium.com. You know, I like that website quite a bit. And I want you to uh, know that this particular article that we are looking at is written by someone called Spirit Science, called Signs That You Might Be Chosen. So I'm going to be reading some excerpts from the article written by Spirit Science. So if you enjoy the excerpt that we are looking at today, then I highly recommend that you go over to medium.com and go support Spirit Science. Go give them a follow. Go give them a like. Go leave a comment, whatever it is. And uh, yeah, show some support over there. So we're going to be taking a look at this. And the reason why I want to take a look at this is because it's important to get the new age perspective of all this. We want to because this. As we venture into this area of higher consciousness, this is an area that humanity is not very familiar with. Humanity is only familiar with self-awareness, stepping into a higher form of consciousness. What we call all awareness is new to humanity. And so many people end up going over to the new age spiritual community. And while there are a lot of ideas there that are true and resonate with the actuality of what existence is, there are also a lot of wild conspiracy ideas and ideas that don't have any grounding in reality and ideas that can be potentially dangerous. But let's take a look at this. So there's this idea of being a chosen one and, and signs that you can know 
that you are a chosen one. So what what's uh, what is spirit and science talking about here? I'm just going to say refer to them as spirit. So what is spirit saying? Spirit says, when I say chosen, I refer to star seeds, light workers, indigo children, witches, alchemists, psychics, mediums, etc. These are all souls that are special, not regular souls. Okay, so first of all, what we're talking about here with regard to chosen ones is a certain type of soul, according to spirit and science. So um, this individual is defining in a couple different ways. And that's important to understand because in the new age systems, you can understand this in, in multiple ways. Some people, when they refer to chosen ones, they're directly referring to an idea known as the 144,000. And this use of the word chosen one that spirit is using is broader. So just any soul that is special, not regular souls in the word in in their words. So star seeds, light workers, indigo children, which is alchemists, psychics, mediums, etc. Uh, what are star seeds? Star seeds are, and this is according to New Age ideas, right? What are star seeds according to New Age? Star seeds are souls that did not originate on Earth. Star seeds are souls that originated on some other planet or some other state of being and chose to incarnate onto Earth. Light workers and indigo children are essentially individuals who are here to in terms of light workers, spread love and light. Indigo children are those who are attaining a higher form of consciousness and helping to create a new earth. So light workers and indigo children are uh, pretty um, similar. And then all these different, you know, witches, alchemists, psychics, mediums, etc. Uh, so he, here's the question that we're going to be looking at. You know, th this idea of uh, being a chosen one, because there is truth to this but we want to see how much truth there is to this because th this is what i want to get across what i want to get across is is that if you feel like that you're not from here i'll tell you what is true is that it's because you aren't from here you are not from earth none of us are from earth none of us are earthlings none of us are uh biological beings we are all eternal immortal souls that exist in the frequency domain, the non-local domain of mind. And the particular experience that we're having right now is just a temporary experience that we're having through these avatars that we're interfacing with. So we are immortal, eternal, spiritual beings that are simply having an interface with an avatar to be able to experience the world in a localized way. So the reason why that you don't feel like you are from here is because you are not from here. But the reason why some people feel that more than others is because people exist in a somnambulistic state or like a sleepwalking state where they're not really aware of what they are or where they are or why they are here. So for example, if you're asleep and you're having a dream, if you're asleep and you're having a dream in that dream, if you don't know that you're dreaming, well, everything seems pretty normal to you. You're not questioning anything. And quite often, there's a lot of strange things happen in your in your dream. Rabbits are running around breathing fire and you're trying desperately to build that cake that you have to make to win the cake contest or some, I don't know, it's it, very weird. But regardless, you don't, when you're dreaming, you don't find it to be weird. You're just really immersed in trying to build that cake and keeping it away from that rabbit so it doesn't ruin it. Seems normal to you. But when you become lucid in the dream, guess what? Then you start to rationally examine things your memory function starts coming back online as well that's why you don't have the cognitive capacity to recognize that something is out of place because your rational faculties are limited as are your memory functions so your rational your ability to examine and make judgments is impaired as well as your memories to be able to compare current situations with past situations to realize hey this is out of the ordinary but anyways when you become lucid those start to come back online and you're able to examine things uh, from a higher, more aware state. And you go, you know what? This is weird. It's, this is kind of strange. And so you, you know, you logically follow. How is this possible? What's going on? Oh, I must be dreaming. You realize that you're dreaming. 
And then what you can, what can you do? You can choose to do something else. Now you realize that what you were doing before was odd and you can go choose to dream another dream. Well, we're in a very similar situation right now where most people are dreaming in the waking world and they're going about their day, just like everything is normal, but everything is not normal. The world is absurd. The world is in a completely backwards, inverted, insane state where we live in an enigma, a mystery of consciousness and mind, and people just go about their day trying to make as much money as they can and cause as much violence and hate as, as, as much as they can, it seems like, for most people. Uh, but anyway, it, it, it's not in a good state. But once you start to become aware of what existence is and what reality is, you start to become lucid in this dream, you start to realize, oh, wow, this is strange. This is not normal. I'm not from here. This is a, a strange place. This is a strange uh, reality. But the good thing about this is that like a personal dream, when you begin to wake up and remember, you can make changes to the dream. Not just by the power of your mind and thinking about it, because it's not a personal dream, it's a shared dream. But by having the conscious capacity to recognize and evaluate, this is not how things should be. They need to be another way. And then collectively, we can come together and make that happen. But the reason why that I'm talking about this, and I, we're, we're going to look at these different signs, okay? We're going to be taking a look at these different signs and what these signs really mean. That's important. What these signs really mean and what they mean for you. But I want to get away from this idea of being a chosen one. And that's important because being a chosen one is... It's not very good vocabulary to use. It's not a very good word choice. This is leftovers of a religious mindset. Being the chosen one of God. Being the... And th this is, th this is um, not a great mindset to carry over into spirituality. Because it starts to partition people into those who are chosen and those who are not chosen. Um, despite maybe one not trying to do that. That's usually a consequence of such ways of thinking. But the idea here is that we are all souls and the way that spirit and science describes it as there are special souls as compared to regular souls. Well, are there special souls? Well, here's the thing. All souls are souls. There aren't different types of souls fundamentally, but souls can evolve and express themselves in different ways. So imagine it like this. Imagine that every single soul is like a Rubik's cube. So if every single soul is like a Rubik's cube, then you can say, well, all souls are the same because they are all Rubik's cubes. However, Rubik's cubes can arrange themselves into different patterns. So souls are also different. Souls are the same, but they're also different. Just like a Rubik's cube, all Rubik's cubes are the same in that they are universally Rubik's cubes, but they are particular uh, particulars in that they can take on various transformations. And so souls as systems of frequency forming various frequency functions can take on different transformations. And this leads to different levels of optimization and different levels of evolution. So yes, you absolutely can have souls at different levels of evolution and progress and transformation and optimization. But the important thing to understand is that underneath everything, we are all the same. And that's just an important distinction to make. It's not like, oh, there are these special type of souls that are eternally special and these regular old souls that are just eternally regular. Any you know, quote unquote, regular soul has the capacity to become a quote unquote special soul with enough work. So what this is really about here is about levels of consciousness, reaching higher levels of consciousness. And the thing is, is that every single one of us has the ability to attain higher levels of consciousness. Now, that doesn't mean that everyone is going to actually do it. But in theory, everyone could do it. You know, it's kind of like um, everyone, unless you have like some major physical disability or whatever, uh, has the ability to go work out and get in shape. 
everyone has that ability unless you know you have some physical debil debil uh, disability or um, some genetic thing that just makes that impossible you know barring those outliers more or less everyone has that ability but is everyone going to do that no because a lot of people have ranked other things in their mind as being more important than that they'd rather uh, watch tv and eat junk food or whatever whatever it is whatever is the case so higher consciousness is similar to this everyone has the capacity to reach a higher level of consciousness but is everyone going to do it no no because they have prioritized things like celebrity gossip and netflix and uh, you know, all the other distractions in life that serve as impediments to reaching a higher state of consciousness. But I digress. Let's take a look at these. Um, let's take a look at these uh, signs. OK, now, and I just want to say, by the way, it is possible that you could be as a soul from another planet or another plane of existence that has chosen to incarnate here. That's possible. It's possible that you are uh, are from Earth, but have chosen to incarnate to help Earth move forward or any of these things that New Agers describe. It is possible, but it has to be. We have to be very clear. We can't know this for sure, and we don't want to use it as a way to um, make other people feel like oh they can't like oh you're not a star seed well i guess you're just one of the regular people you know or, or people who start we want to make sure that everyone knows that they have the capacity every single one of you is a nova every single one of you has the fire of starlight inside able to manifest your will upon reality everyone has that within them it's just up to you whether you will actualize that fire or keep it as potential within so um, but let, but let's take a look at this and I want to, and, and by the way, this isn't strictly 15. Uh, there's a bunch of different ones here. Um, 15 sounded good for the title. So it might be a little more than 15 might be a little less than 15. I don't know, but let's, let's take a look at this. Um, these are, and, and so star, uh, spirit and science says here are some, but not all signs that you may be one of the above mentioned entities, right? So like a star seed or a light worker or an indigo child, etc. So let's examine this. And what I want to um, talk about here is that what these signs really are more about are more about the level of awareness that you're at rather than particular being like a star seed or, or something like that. Like, again, it's it's possible, but what we know to be true is that humanity is reaching higher levels of consciousness and this comes with different signs. But let's take a look at this. All right. So the first one says being the black sheep in your family, community or friendship groups. So could this be a sign of higher consciousness? Yeah, it can. It, does it mean that for sure? No, but it's it, but it's an indication. And the reason why that that's an indication is because you're starting to see reality with new eyes and often this can make you ostracized right like you feel different from your family you feel different from your friends things that they're interested in you just don't find to be important you find the world to be backwards you believe in things that they don't believe in because those ideas might be archaic so because of that because of your awareness of more important things in the world that can often make one ostracized so indirectly yes being the black sheep in your family or community or friendship groups can be a sign that one is seeing the world in new eyes. So two, being an INTJ or INFJ or having a strong intuitive side. All right, well, so this one I don't really like. So INTJ or INFJ comes with the Meyer Briggs personality types. So for those who don't know, this comes from the Jungian cognitive functions. So first of all, the Myers-Briggs personality type is a little dubious. Um, it's uh, it's not very it's not highly accurate. OK, so first of all, the Myers-Briggs personality testing is not very accurate. But one thing that has to be made clear here, because there's a lot of things that you might find on the Internet that says something like, oh, Myers-Briggs personality types debunked. So it's important to separate the idea between the Myers-Briggs personality types 
and the personality test per se and the Jungian functions themselves having to do with like intuition and thinking and sensing and feeling. And then of course, introversion and extroversion. It doesn't mean that the functions have been debunked. The functions are still part of Carl Jung's psychological theory. Uh, what has been pulled into question is the testing technique that Myers and Briggs developed to assign personality types to people using those functions. So that's important to understand. But that's uh, really neither here nor there. The idea that being an INTJ or an I INFJ is a sign that you are a, a, a chosen one or a special soul, um, I don't like this idea. I believe that, like, let, let's let's go with this paradigm of, of personality types. If we're going with this paradigm of personality types, all of these different personality types have various strengths and weaknesses. And you can think of them as like, there are some people out there who like to think, oh, this personality type is just better than that one. That's not, <laughs> that's not what it's like. Everyone has different strengths and weaknesses. And it's sort of like picking a class in a video game. There's the wizard or the mage or the sorcerer or the warrior or the thief or the, I don't know. There's just all these different classes that you can pick in a, in a game. And if it's a well-balanced game, none of the classes are really just fundamentally better than any of the other ones. They all have various strengths and weaknesses and certain skill sets that the others don't and different areas that they're able to apply themselves that some, some are not. And so, um, in, in, I, I do not believe that, uh, you know, you, you need to be an INTJ or an IF, uh, J to be some sort of special soul or anything like that. Can you be an INTJ or an INFJ and be a, someone who have higher consciousness? Absolutely. But so can an, you know, ENTJ or an ENTP or EF, you know, what, whatever. Um, you know, the, I will say the only uh, dominant cognitive function that I have seen people struggle with are those who are highly sensory oriented individuals. Those who are, who are highly um, associated with sensing. I, I have found individuals who are highly oriented to sensing tend to be either highly religious or ironically, highly materialist atheist. Very, very interesting. Very, very strange. Um, but sensing types seem to be very much uh, rooted in, in, in mainstream religion or atheistic materialist science. Now, these are just my anecdotal observations. I've, you know, there, I don't think there's any data on this or anything like this. But I just want to say that for the record, I believe that any personality type can attain higher consciousness. In my experience, I think those who are sensory types may find it more challenging because they tend to be locked into, you know, the, the sensory world and what they can observe. So it can sometimes cut them off from an immaterial notion of reality. But still, I believe that they as well can reach higher consciousness. It just might be, you know, an extra, extra hurdle to get over. So this one. Um, I don't really like, I don't like, this is what rubs me wrong, the wrong way about the whole chosen one thing. Like, oh, are you a chosen one? Well, if you're an INTJ or an IFJ, INFJ, well, maybe you're a chosen one. Then pff, all those, you know, ease and whatever, oh, screw them. No, I don't like that idea. Um, so I, I don't really, I don't really particularly agree with that one. Uh, three, having a sense of urgency that you need to gather knowledge or resources. Yes, I think that that can come along with higher consciousness because when you start to understand what reality is, you start to kind of get almost like a high on understanding existence where things start to click and fall in place. And you just want to know more and more and more. And you start to, you know, uh, get this this urge to want to know existence as you have a new view on reality. So I could see that one being true. Four, as a child having nightmares, sleepwalking, or insomnia. I don't particularly see a strong connection between having nightmares, sleepwalking, or insomnia. I possibly, maybe, that could occur if perhaps a child is more aware 
of the you know, all of the hatred and division and the strife in the world and the suffering in the world, if a, if a child is more intuitively aware of that, that could translate into nightmares and sleepwalking and insomnia because those are all signs of stress. So I don't really see a direct link, but I could see maybe, maybe. Five, being able to lucid dream or astrally project. I think that this uh, is another one of those where, yeah, uh, possibly, possibly so. I think that if someone is able to lucid dream or astrally project, they are having uh, a very strong connection to their right brain unconscious. Uh, and because they're having a strong connection to their right brain unconscious, they are able to attain lucidity in those states. That doesn't mean if you can't lucid dream or astral project that you can't reach higher consciousness or that you have to do those things to reach higher consciousness. No, not at all. But um, is it possible that if you are able to do these things, that it shows that you are, uh, you know, more connected to the unconscious domain? Yes, I think that that is, that is possible. Being a synesthete. So synesthete has to do with synesthesia, which is, they describe it as seeing colors in your mind, smelling words. Um, it's like, uh, yeah, like being able to see music or hear color. Often this occurs during psychedelic substances. This occurs with people who perhaps do like ayahuasca or LSD. This can occur. And Again, I think that this is a connection to the right brain unconscious domain, right? You, you have a, um, what, what's happening here is that the veil between left brain consciousness and right brain unconscious or physical reality and the immaterial reality, the veil is beginning to become thin. And when the ve uh, veil becomes thinner, a lot of different things uh, can happen where you are um, having these different uh, experiences that people normally don't because that veil is there. So is that possible? Yeah, I think that that's, um, it, it's a possibility, yes. Uh, feeling like you simply don't resonate with other humans? Absolutely, I think this is a very strong one. And that just goes hand in hand with you seeing reality different. You realize that reality is there's something more to reality than what it seems and you are uh, looking to understand yourself better and understand the world better and yet everyone else seems like they don't care about that at all they just don't want to go get drinks on the weekend and party all the time nothing wrong with getting drinks and partying not at all we're also here to have a good time we always have to remember that we're not here to just be like live like monks all unless you want to live like that that's fine but that's not the purpose of reality uh, reality likes to party sometimes, Dionysus. So nothing wrong with that. But if that's all your life is about, it's probably uh, going to lead to some problems. So, so yes, I think that this feeling that you simply don't resonate with other humans is a sign of reaching higher consciousness, can be a sign of reaching higher consciousness because you are seeing the world in a different way. Knowing you're different from everyone, same thing. Same thing, I think, the same reasoning. Tending to employ any form of escapism, such as addiction, disassociation, partying, drinking, etc. So this is a little bit of a tricky one. I don't think that it, like, yes, it can occur. If you start to see how, messed up the world is this can lead to wanting an escape to partying or drinking or whatever that can happen yes but does that mean that what we don't want is for people to who are who are addicts and just party all the time and drinking all the time just go like oh well i'm a special soul see <laughs> uh we don't really want to i you know, they might, uh, I don't know how how healthy that is to make a, a correlation here. Um, I think I think that there I think there is some correlation possibly, but it could stem from a, a number of other things as well. So we have to be very careful 
Um, escapism and addiction and disassociation, partying and drinking can also come from an unintegrated shadow self, from denying the shadow self. So we always want to, you know, if we, if we are engaging in, in these kinds of escapism or addictive behaviors, we want to understand the reason why. And we don't want to just be like, oh, well, it's because I'm a higher soul. That's why. Mm. Let's, let's really get to the root of the problem and figure out why so that we can live a better life. Uh, interest in mysticism as a child, magic, folklore, witchcraft, mythology, angels and demons, etc. I think it's possible. Yes, that could be a correlation. I don't think it's a really strong one. I think a lot of people can be interested in ma magic and folklore and witchcraft and mythology, angels and demons, and just, just like the fantasy genre. But others take it further and have a more direct experience with it. And that there can be some correlation there. Having a very vivid imagination as a child. See, some of these are very, very general and kind of, these are like Barnum statements. They can apply to everyone. And that's, that's the thing we want to be. We really want to use logic and reason here and understand this well. Remember, meta rationalism is about understanding metaphysics rationally. So we really want to um, nail these things down and be very specific with these things. And right now, it's a lot like throwing out Barnum statements. Barnum statements is a technique often used by fraudulent psychics and mediums, and they're statements that anyone can agree with. Like, um, uh, I, I, I don't know. You like to go out and be around people and socialize, but you often need to go home and recharge for a while. You, you like your own personal space. Like eight out of 10 people can find a way to agree with that. Oh yeah, you're right. I do like, you know, going out and talking to people, but man, I do need my personal space. There's a lot of statements like that that are widely applicable to almost everyone or someone can find a way to make it themselves and a lot of these are, are that like having a very vivid imagination as a child i think most of us had a, a very vivid imagination as a child so i wouldn't really think that that's a strong sign um talking to yourself often in a conversational manner that's interesting i've never heard that as uh being a sign of higher consciousness i i think i have heard somewhere that intellectuals tend to talk to themselves more i don't know if that's true that may have just been a meme I read. So don't, that just sounds like something I heard before. No idea if that's true or not. Um, does, so does talking to yourself mean you're, you're a special soul? <laughs> maybe you're a special soul. Uh, I don't, uh, no, it, maybe. I, I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a very strong correlation here. That's just, no, I think that, I think that's a little bit of a reach. Uh, hearing your own inner thoughts and monologue inside your head like a narrator. Many people cannot hear their own voice in their head. Uh, having an inner monologue, right? So I think that most people out there, I don't know what the percentage is, but most people have an inner monologue. You hear yourself in your head like a narrator. So if you're hungry, you usually hear yourself in your head, think, oh, you know, I'm really hungry. I think in a few hours I'm going to go to the fridge and make myself a sandwich. And you have like a narrator in your own voice that you, he that you hear in your head. Some people don't have that. But I think most people do. Some people don't. So is it a sign that you are a uh, special soul, a, a chosen one, because you hear thoughts in your head? I, I think that's another pretty big reach. It's a pretty big... We're almost getting to the point now where it's like, if you think, that's a sign. No, I know it's not that specific, but that's pretty, that's pretty general. So I don't think whether you have an inner monologue or not is indicative, though um, it is an interesting thing to think about. Uh, and I think this does have to do with, well, you know what, we, we could get into a whole uh, discussion about that because this does have to do with like the left brain processing and right brain processing and how individuals do tend to think in different ways with regard to what hemispheric functions are dominant. So anyway, um, talking to invisible people or imaginary friends as a child. I think it's, you know, again, this one, a little bit of a stretch. I think it's a correlation. Sure. Maybe. 
the the phenomenon though i will tell you the phenomenon of imaginary friends as as a child is a very interesting phenomenon it happens to a lot of children at a certain age in their development there's a very specific age a very specific window where children will often develop a relationship with an imaginary friend and this is actually something very interesting that I would like to study more in depth because it has to do with the nature of consciousness and the possibility of an intermediary stage of consciousness between a more unconscious phase of existence and consciousness, what, which is uh, bicameralism. The, if bicameralism is true, then the phenomenon of imaginary friends might be a leftover from bicameralism real quick for those who don't know what bicameralism is this is a theory put out by psychologist known as julian Jaynes. very smart guy julian Jaynes said that hey there was another type of consciousness or a form of awareness between as as humanity was developing self-awareness you know humanity went from an unconscious state and then developing self-awareness, Julian Jane says there was an in-between phase where the right brain hemispheric function of the brain dominated the left brain hemispheric functions of the brain, so humans weren't really conscious. Instead, they were being kind of ordered around by auditory and possibly visual hallucinations. So they would um, hear voices almost, you know, kind of like uh, schizophrenia as well would perhaps be a, uh, a, a point in the direction of what bicameralism may have been like to some degree. So it, it, uh, we, we don't know if bicameralism is true. It, it may not be at all. But if it is, the idea of imaginary friends could be an interesting leftover from that development of our evolutionary consciousness. Keen interest in astrology. All right, so this one. So is a keen interest in astrology a sign of... I'm not looking at this as being a sign of being a chosen one. I don't like the idea of being a chosen one. I don't like that. I think we need to get away from that thinking. But is it a sign of reaching a higher consciousness? Starting to develop higher consciousness? Starting to realize what you are, where you are, why you are here? having an uh, understanding re that reality is an illusion, et cetera, all, all the things that come along with that. Having a keen interest in astrology. Okay, I will say indirectly, I think it's possible. Why? So first of all, I'll tell you, I do not believe in astrology and I think astrology can be dangerous. However, I do believe in the archetypal or Jungian interpretation of astrology, which means astrology represents archetypal patterns in reality which means that the astrological signs and types and all that, they do exist, but they exist as archetypes and have no actual correlation to uh, stars and planets. So they stand for certain patterns, certain personalities, certain types, certain forces, but they don't actually have something to do with the physical location of stars and planets. That's simply metaphor, that's simply allegory. So I just want to make it clear. I don't believe in the literalist interpretation of astrology, but I do believe in an archetypal uh, interpretation of astrology. And that's just like anything else, like the Greek gods or, you know, the different archetypes in the Bible, uh, you know, demons and angels, etc. I don't, I believe that these things represent archetypes, they represent universal patterns that we can tune into. So anyway, I don't believe that uh, astrology as literally being true uh, exists. I think there's a lot of dangerous things that can come from that, such as the creation of a new kind of caste system. Uh, a lot of, I see a lot of discrimination, people being like, oh, I don't go out with, you know, Scorpios or, oh, you know, um, fuck Tauruses or, you know, wh whatever. I just see a lot of discrimination and I, I think that's a little ridiculous and it's just something else that causes more division and um and astrology would be something that could be very easily empirically verified you could if astrology were true it would be very easy to empirically verify uh, astrology anyway 
I believe in archetypal interpretation, not the literalist interpretation. The archetypal interpretation is fine. So if you like, you like the symbolism of astrology and you think it's cool and you relate to different um, symbols and signs, nothing wrong with that. But I would highly recommend taking an archetypal interpretation, not a literalist interpretation. But anyway, can a keen interest in astrology? I think that a keen interest in astrology can, in fact, point towards that. Why? Well, because when people are starting to reach a higher form of awareness, they're starting to tap into the source of existence through their intuitive capacity, and they're starting to look for patterns. And astrology is a kind of pattern. It's a wrong pattern, but they're starting to look for pattern. This is the patterns that people start to look through, through like astrology and angel numbers and gematria numerology. These patterns aren't objectively real. They are symbolically real. You can uh, uh, ascribe meaning and and value to them in a in a in a symbolic way, but as far as objectively being true, they have no objective validity. However, it shows the mind understanding that reality is built on pattern and trying to find patterns. They're just engaging in apophenia. Ra oh, did my microphone turn off? Let me make sure I didn't turn off my mic. Okay, my mic's still on. They're engaging in apophenia rather than concept networking. And I always say this, one of the number one roadblocks to attaining higher awareness is apophenia. And apophenia is everywhere in the New Age community. And that's making connections that aren't actually there. Making connections are great, but you have to do that in terms of concept networking where it's done in a rational way, not through apophenia where you just start making connections everywhere. You start believing in wild conspiracy theories. You think everything is a conspiracy. You start uh, just believing everything you hear and start thinking that everything is a sign from the universe. Uh, um, apophenia is related to the phenomenon uh, pareidolia, where you look at the clouds and you see a cloud and you see a face in the clouds. See, if you look at the clouds and you see a face in the clouds, that's a form of apophenia known as pareidolia. Now, if you look at the clouds and you see a face in the clouds, that's fine. You can go, oh, that's, oh, look at that. Cute. It looks like a bunny. But if you believe that that cloud is actually a bunny and that there are giant space rabbits coming down to, to take over the world, then that's a problem. And that's the problem that we find in New Age spirituality, where connections are being made, but not through concept networking, through apophenia. So that there are archetypal patterns, like astrology, that are symbolic like the bunny in the sky, but are being taken as literal. That's the, pro that's the problem. Uh, but anyway, I do think that an interest in astrology can be a sign of someone starting to understand more things about existence because at least they're starting to look for patterns and connections somewhere. And they're like, okay, re it, you know, to someone who hasn't really developed their rational faculties very well, very well I could see why someone might be attracted to astrology. So I, I, I can see that as being a sign. Yes, I, I could see that. Uh, having an extreme love or interest in animals and nature, I think that that is a possibility because you begin to develop a sense of empathy and a uh, understanding that we're all one and all interconnected. So you want to be nice to animals because you realize that we're all just reflections of each other and you were an animal in a past life and you didn't, you know, you probably wouldn't want someone to uh, torture you like in all these slaughterhouses. That wouldn't be fun. Being able to see through societal constructs, very good one, yes. Being extremely empathetic to a fault, possibly, possibly. See, all these things are, you know, like there, there are definitely people who can start to become higher consciousness who aren't, who, who aren't empathetic at all, at all. They have a malformed, developed uh, higher consciousness. And this is where you start to get people who are very manipulative in like secret societies and occult systems where they start to look at themselves as masters of the universe and controllers of existence. And, and there's nothing wrong with understanding that we are the universe and that we are together the creators and the destroyers and the transformers of all reality. That's, that's, there's nothing, that's what we are. We are the absolute manifest here. And this is our creation. This is our world. This is our kingdom. But when you start believing that you uh, should 
lord your vast superior intellect and consciousness over the lowly peons who, you know, are just so dumb and can't understand these highly secretive uh, techniques of consciousness, that's when you have a problem. That's when you have an issue. So is being extremely empathetic a, a sign? Could be, but not necessarily. Believing in ghosts and extraterrestrials? Uh, a lot of people believe in ghosts and extraterrestrials. Nothing wrong with believing in ghosts and extraterrestrials. I believe in extraterrestrials, absolutely. Is it a sign of higher consciousness? Uh, yeah, I think that's a little bit of a reach. Glazing over in the world and escaping your mind frequently. Yeah, I think that one's possible. If you're highly, you know, tapped in, you're often contemplating ideas a lot of the time, and so you can become easily distracted because you're living in your head. Forgetting large chunks of your life, almost like a memory blackout. See, a lot of these things <laughs> could indirectly be related. Now, these things aren't direct enough for my taste. They're very, like, they're Barnum, Barnum statements. These are things that I think a lot of us could agree with. I think a lot of us can think about large chunks of our life that we can't really remember very well. Um, not everyone, but I think, you know, a lot of people can think of certain times that are, that are fuzzy. And um, this can have to do with stress and trauma and just the mind doing housekeeping, not weighing certain memories as important, variety of reasons. I, I, I don't think that's a very convincing one. Um, let's see. Let's see if let, let's go through these a little quicker. I want to get to some good ones because there's a lot here that I think are not. Like hating shallow conversations. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Drawn towards psychology due to the desire to understand human behavior. I think that's that's possible. Having a logical side that is impervious to irrationality. Ooh, that's interesting. I like that she included this. Because usually in a lot of these new age and spiritual systems and articles, you never get any talk of logic and reason. Logic and reason is almost seen like, oh, like that's the enemy. You know, it's like, oh, ooh, logic and order and structure. No, it's all just about wavy energy, man. And there's nothing wrong with being connected to the intuitive, symbolic, archetypal, unconscious domain. But there's also nothing wrong with understanding how to use your logic and reason to order that domain into a comprehensive pattern that accurately reflects reality. So it's about both, right brain and left brain. You need both feet to walk. You just try and rock, walk with one foot, you're not gonna get very far. You need both your feet to walk. You need both left and right hemispheric functions of the brain working in a synergistic fashion to reach higher consciousness and understand reality accurately. So I like very much that she included having a logical side that is impervious to irrationality. I like that a lot. Glad that she added that. Uh, they, 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 these are kind of funny. Tendency to get cynical. Uh, maybe, you know, like when you start to see how terrible the world is, you can get kind of cynical sometimes, but a lot, a lot of people also have a positive attitude about it. Tendency to have an air of superiority, but not always. Uh, I see again, that comes with the type of individuals who are like, like I said, those who have a malformed analog all, those who start to see themselves as masters and lords over another and superior to others, uh, etc. Uh, and, and, and so, yeah, I, I guess I could see that, but that's definitely not a, not a good sign. That's a negative sign that needs to be corrected. So there's nothing. And, and I think sometimes it can seem like an air of superiority when we're talking about higher consciousness, for example, it's like, oh, well, you're saying you have a consciousness that's higher than everyone else's or something. It's not about being superior. It's about wanting everyone to be able to, uh, reach this level as well so that we can build a better world. It's like, you know, let's say someone who is educated. If someone is educated, 
and they're out there saying, hey, you know, I've learned some things. I want to help you guys learn things too. There's no, you know, air of superiority about that. Or, you know, if someone who is, uh, you know, works out their whole life, they're a bodybuilder and they're just, they're just stronger than you are. And they're like, hey, but I can teach you. I can help you. Uh, if you want, if that's something you're interested in, I can teach you, I can help you. There's not a, there's not a superiority complex going on here. It's just, um, a different level that has been attained, but everyone has the capacity to attain that. And we actively want everyone to have the, uh, capacity to entertain, uh, to attain that. So having a deep desire to help people or the world in some way, I think that's a really important one. I think that I think that that's a very strong one, having a deep desire to help people or the world and so on. I think that's a very strong one where you have this sense of you have a purpose, but you might not know what it is. Like you, there's this thing, like you feel like, you know, there's something you should be doing with your life that's like purposeful and meaningful, but you can't place it. And, and you want to help the world or help people in some way, but maybe you just can't figure out what it is. I think, I think that's a pretty, a pretty strong one. Um, feeling drawn towards some sort of healing profession, such as doctor, psychologist, counselor, nurse, etc. Yeah, I think that's an extension of someone feeling like they ha they have some sort of purpose they can't figure out. And they want to help people in the world. So they're like, OK, I want to help people. What can I do? Well, maybe if I become a counselor or a nurse or a doctor or a psychologist, maybe I can help people that way. So I think that that can be an extension of people trying to find uh, a purpose in some way to to fulfill that purpose. But we know that we all have that intrinsic purpose because what our true purpose is, is to create the new earth. That's what we are. We are reality shapers. As Neogenians, we are reality shapers here to create the new beginning. So our purpose is both particular and universal. We have the collective purpose of creating the new earth. But how we do that is unique to each and every one of us. Each and every one of us has a very specific set of talents and skills and interests. And we can use those in a very, uh, in very various ways to create the new earth. So that's what it's all about is realizing that our purpose here is to, what is our purpose? What is it to transform ourselves and transform the world? That's what we are as gods. We are the transformers. We are the creators. We are the destroyers. We are here to create a new world as the old world fades away into ash. We will rise from those ashes like a phoenix. So we always have to be very understanding of the fire that burns within us because that fire yearns to actualize and manifest in the world. So uh, one thing that I want to say that spirit says is these are just some signs that you may be something other than just a regular soul. And I've mixed in signs from multiple categories. And basically she's just saying, I just put this together because I want you to start thinking about this stuff. Um, so what do I think about this as a whole? I think as a whole, it's kind of general and kind of vague and can, can apply to a lot of people. I think that there are some good things in here. But what I think that this is for the ones that correlate more directly are signs of higher consciousness, signs of not necessarily that you are a chosen one. I, I really think it's important to get away from this idea of being, oh, I'm part of the special because humans like that. OK, you know, people people like that. They want to feel like they're 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 special and they're part of the special elite and whatever but the 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 fact of the matter is is that all of you are special and you have the power to increase your consciousness through your efforts so it's not about like oh yeah i'm special why am i special because i was born on in another galaxy and i chose to came here uh, to come here that's why i'm special no, you, you, you're because that makes other people be like, oh, well, oh, shit, I don't feel like I'm from another galaxy. I must be a piece of crap then. I can't do anything with my life because I'm not a, you know, Pleiadian. I must I must be just a bland, normal, old, boring human that can't do anything. No, what makes one truly unique and special is the work that one puts in to attain these levels of self-actualization and transformation and become a reality shaper. That is what allows one to really exercise their power. And this is available to everyone. So I like to get away from this idea of thinking, oh, well, are you one of the chosen people? No, it's are you going to become what you have 
the power to become. Friedrich Nietzsche said, become what you are. You have it within you, deep inside, as potential, every single one of you. And for some, it's starting to sprout. For others, it's beginning to grow even more. And others, it's beginning to bloom. But we can all cultivate and actualize that within ourselves. We are all, and that's so important. And I want to get that across. And, and, and I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, too hard on any of these other beliefs or anything like that. I think in general, these are fairly positive. I don't think that there's a lot of harm from people believing that it, it could, it could become something harmful at the stage that it's at right now. It's not that harmful and at least helps people get in the mindset of wanting to create a better world and not like that. It can become something harmful later if you start thinking in terms of being a chosen one or something. The fact of the matter is, is that we are all expressions of the eternal absolute. We are all eternal Zetas, eternal souls, eternal beings of frequencies that have the power to transform ourselves and transform our lives. And it's just up to you if you're going to do it. If you're going to make that decision now to change yourself, change the world, and create the new earth. So that's what we're all about here. That's what the Neogenian is about. That's what the new beginning is about as we create a new era of humanity through a new consciousness. So I hope you enjoy that. Let me know what you think. Tell me in the comments below. And by the way, I always want to remind you as well, just to reiterate, it is possible. I'm not saying it's impossible that people can't be from other planets or souls chose to incarnate here. It's very possible. It's very possible that you did. It's very possible that I did. It's very possible that many of us has. But we don't know that for sure and it doesn't bear any it doesn't make any difference on our uh ability to transform ourselves and transform the world so i think it's an extra stumbling block that we need to recognize that you know it's not something that we can know for sure and ultimately it doesn't matter all that is just a distraction what matters is changing yourself and changing the world all that other stuff it's just it's 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 just a show on the side of the road trying to get you off the path. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. It's just a distraction. So let's focus on what's really important. Building a new world. Creating the earth in our image. The image of our interconnectivity. The image of our eternal nature. Where we understand that we are all one. Expressed in a multiplicity. Coming to understand each other. In our various transformations. In this grand game that we're all playing. Let's start to enjoy it. Let's start to have some fun. So I hope you enjoyed this, my friends. Like I said, uh, please like and subscribe. Like I said, that, that helps this information get out there. It tells the algorithm to spread this around. So please do. If you enjoy my work, support over on patreon.com slash official, and you'll be able to access all of our members only videos. There's a lot and they're really great. And you can also support on YouTube by hitting the join button right below this video. So... Uh, oh, also, remember, I have a book series, Laying Out the Neogenian System, coming out this year very, very soon. So keep an eye out. I'll be releasing more information on that. And give me a follow on Spotify. You can find me on Spotify at Dawn of the New Earth. Go give me a follow there. And as always, uh, my friends, remember, hey, you don't have to support monetarily. This isn't church. There are plenty of free ways you can support. Like I said, liking, subscribing, sharing. On all these different platforms, that helps a lot. But I want to give a big shout out to everyone who does support. Thank you so much. Um, and I know that I haven't updated this yet. I need to update it. So if you're not on here yet, and you should be, uh, my apologies. Just give me a, a week or two. Shout out to Renaissance Fairy, Cassidy, Angela, the Halloween Mom, DB, Fashida, Enki, Nusalina, Masam, Eric Fire, Christopher Smith, the Eternal Empire, and everyone else. Thank you very much. <laughs>